Hi, I want to talk to you about the ECPPT version 2 or eLearn Security Certified Professional Penetration Tester. Uh, this is going to be my honest review. It's going to be kind of uh, late. I took the exam and passed my certification over two months ago now, but I just thought it'd be good to help out the community and anyone interested in actually taking the course and exam now offered by INE. So in this video, I'm going to talk about the course itself, what I found was good, what I found wasn't so good, and what I think they can do to improve the course moving forward. After that, I'm going to talk about the exam itself, uh, my personal experience with the exam from day one up until day seven when I actually submitted my report. And then at the end, I just want to give some thoughts and uh, honest opinions on the overall certification process for anyone interested in taking the exam. Okay, so the ECPPT course, what did I find good about the course? The best thing about the uh, course overall would be the multiple mediums offered by INE. From the slides to the videos and then the little quizzes in between as well as the labs. Now the labs in particular, I will have some comments on about how I think they can improve them. but. Back to the good, I think being able to switch between slides, videos, and quizzes is a good strategy, a good teaching strategy, because not all people learn the same. So it's good to be able to choose, you know, do a deep dive into a couple slides, uh, a lot of reading, and then sit there and sum up what you read in the slides with the video. I think this is a good teaching strategy, and I think it helped me learn along my, um, my journey to the ECPPT. Now, what I didn't like so much about the course would be the labs in particular. I'm not sure if they've changed it since then. I, like I said, I took the exam and certification over two months ago, but when I did take the exam or when I did go through the course, the labs were only offered through the guacamole servers. So you had to use your browser in order to play with the labs. Uh, and with my experience with that, was an, it was not great. Um, there was a lot of connection issues. And uh, so I didn't get to spend too much time in the labs like I would have liked to. And um, I think in order to fix that, they could go back. So I believe it used to be where, and correct me if I'm wrong, eLearn Security offered a VPN. You could VPN into the labs. So I think if I only went back to this, uh, it would improve the course dramatically. So overall, I like the course. I think the uh, different mediums were great for learning, especially for people that don't learn the same as others. And um, the labs, I think they could improve them by going back to the VPN way of accessing them. So here we are on INE's website where you'll actually be taking the penetration testing professional course at. Um, so I wanna take you guys through um, just some of the modules to show you guys what, what the course will look like and what all is kind of included inside of the course itself. So as you can see, they, they predict that the uh, course will take a total of 85 hours. Um, I personally did not take the entire course. I did not go through all the modules. I kind of went through only what I thought would be useful uh, useful to me for the exam itself, uh, mostly the network security. So as you can see, there's uh, the activities include uh, courses, 85 videos, 83 quizzes, 30 labs, and a lot of slides. And I do mean a lot of slides. Getting into the actual system security itself it was very slide heavy. And like I said, I didn't go through most of the other modules on the course besides network security. I think I got into system security a little bit, but like I said, it was just so many slides. As you can see, there's architecture fundamentals, assembly, debug, and tool arsenal, um, buffer overflows. I didn't use the this section of the, or I actually didn't use the buffer overflows included in this exam or course at all. For a buffer overflows, I actually used a try hack me. And I'll show you what I, what rooms I went through to prepare for the buffer overflow checks section of the exam. I'll show you guys that. But you can see we get into shell coding. I went through that a bit. Cryptography, password cracking. Uh, there's even a little bit of malware at the end here. Like I said, though, the system security section was pretty heavy on the slides. And then the penetration testing network security. Now, I did go through this entire section of the course. I figured this would be the most helpful to me personally for the exam, but it goes through all your basic uh, pen testing methodologies, uh, information gathering, scanning, enumeration, sniffing, man in the middle attacks, exploitation, post-exploitation, 
and then it goes even through uh, some other things like anonymity and social engineering which aren't actually a part of the exam itself and there's a lot of other things included inside the course that's probably going to be very useful to you as a pen tester like PowerShell you should probably know PowerShell as a pen tester uh, your Linux exploitation web app security these are all good to know uh, I'd already done Wi-Fi security in the past so I didn't really mess with the Wi-Fi security section of the exam I'm sure it's great. Uh, Metasploit and Ruby, very useful. And then the ECPP2 version 2 exam preparation. I think I went through a little bit of this, but there's not much, as you can see, yeah, there's not much to it. If you never connected to a lab before or took an exam with eLearn security, then this would probably be pretty helpful to you. But um, yeah, that's the, so this is the course. Like I said, I did not complete the entire course. I passed my exam. Take that uh, and do with that what you will. Like I said, the network security is probably the most important part to me or anyone want to actually pass the ECPPT exam. But yeah, I just want to show you guys, give you guys a quick overview of the exam or the course itself that I use to prepare for the exam. I'll show you some other sources that I use to also prepare. But this and the network security section were predominantly what I used uh, for preparation. I want to show you guys this um, room on TriHack Me in order to prepare, help you prepare for pivoting. Pivoting was a huge part of the ECPPT exam. You know, it was a it was one of the most difficult parts of the exam for me personally, and I'm pretty sure it's one of the most difficult parts for other people as well. And so this is like one of the one of my biggest resources I used personally to learn pivoting before taking the exam. It's just the wreath room from TriHack Me, and it walks through all different methods of pivoting from exploitation enumeration, uh, SSH tunneling, port forwarding, proxy chains, chisel, chisel is great. Uh, I think I used a little bit of uh, S-Shuttle and maybe even a little bit of SOCAT. But having all these different methods and tools and understanding how to use them will just benefit you so much on the exam itself. I know it helped me out a lot, so this is just a little bit of advice for me to future test takers. Definitely go through this room know the tools, understand how to use them before taking the exam so you're not spending all your time in the exam environment learning how to pivot. You don't want to be learning how to pivot during the exam itself. So definitely, you know, to come in here, take your notes, use your notes on the exam, and this will help you with pivoting. The second thing I want to recommend for the exam is the buffer overflow rooms from TriHackMe, especially Gatekeeper itself right here is a huge one. Um, just go through all of these rooms, understand buffer overflows, set, them, set up your Windows 7 lab environment. If you guys want me to do a video on actually setting up your buffer overflow environment in a virtual machine and tackling that, I can easily and quickly set up, uh, make a video for that for you guys. Just let me know in the comments, but um, uh, definitely, you know, work on your buffer overflows, understand. Have a virtual machine set up prior to the exam. I, uh, Windows machine so that you can play around with your buffer overflow and have it ready before the exam, before you even start the exam. So that way you're not sitting there struggling with getting all that set up. So have your notes for pivoting, have your virtual machine set up, download or you know know how to exploit your buffer overflows, have your debugger and everything, immunity debugger and all that already installed on your virtual machine and you'll be ready to go. Okay, on to the exam portion of the review. The long seven day exam that if I had to work that week, prob probably would not have passed the exam, to be honest with you. So I took the ECPPT version 2 exam uh, about two months into my ethical hacking journey. So I was still pretty fresh. Uh, I've been playing CTFs mostly, and, and then I took the EJPT prior to the ECPPT. So I didn't have a whole lot of experience with ethical hacking prior to taking this exam. And I got, I got to tell you, it was a pretty intense exam, I will say that. Um, the exam for me lasted, I think I was in the exam environment for six days, or I think I was in the exam environment for seven days. But I was taking, I was actually taking the exam the first six days, and then on the seventh day I started to write my report for the exam. But let me see if I can uh, walk you guys through exactly how that was day by day. Uh, day one. I started the exam process, I believe I was able to get into the first machine. I got a foothold in the first machine within the first day and everything was running smoothly. Um, I went to bed that night feeling good. Day two came and that's when I started running into some issues. Uh, the exam environment 
kept uh, I tried to restart in the exam environment and it would freeze up and it wouldn't let me restart and that went on for a couple couple hours but I was able to resolve the issue just by waiting waiting a little while so it wasn't too big of a deal um, but yeah after the technical issues were over the actual the um, other problems started to arise within the exam environment itself I was having trouble getting past uh, the foothold and pivoting well I was able to root the machine I think the second day I was able to root the machine but from there it was I was having trouble getting to the next machine pivoting pivoting was probably the hardest thing for me on the exam pivoting and double pivoting trying to understand how that entire process worked had to go back to my networking roots so that was fun but I was stuck trying to pivot to the next uh, next machine I believe for probably three or four days and then the double pivot I think was probably another day on top of that so like I said I got um, I finished the exam I was able to route the final machine on day six so most of the time was spent pivoting if I can give any advice for this exam it would be know how to pivot know multiple methods of pivoting uh, you know pick up a couple different tools something you haven't you haven't messed with before a couple tools you haven't used learn them they will come in handy and they will be so helpful for this exam so if I can give any advice for the exam at all it would be know how to pivot um, if I could give any other advice for the exam the second thing I would say is no metasploit because metasploit was a lifesaver during this exam I primarily I was trying to go through the exam without using metasploit too much but it ended up it ended up being metasploit saved my saved me from failing the exam for sure so know how to pivot and make sure you know how to use metasploit during this exam like I said this was a couple months ago two or three months ago now at this point actually I think it was probably even longer than that what are we now in December so it was a couple months ago now that I took this exam and I'm pretty knowledgeable now on metasploit pivoting all that stuff a lot more than I was then that's for sure I was still kind of a newbie I mean I'm a newbie now but I was even more of a newbie back then when I took the exam so that's just some advice from a newbie to, you know other newbies know how to pivot and know how to use metasploit um, like I said day six I finished the exam I started writing my report this was another hurdle that I wasn't expecting to have to jump over was the report writing the report took up a lot of time for me I think you have a week to do the exam itself and then you have the next week to do the report I started my report day seven and I think I finished writing and wrapping up the report probably four days after that three or four days after that I just wanted to make sure my report was uh, immaculate, spectacular there was no reason for him to fail me on the report since I had passed all the technical aspects of the exam so that was good and long and hard process but um yeah that was that was probably the next hardest thing about the exam beyond the pivoting and knowing how to use metasploit was the report writing it's got to be a professional report take plenty of screenshots that's definitely what helped me fill up the pages was screenshot after screenshot after screenshot as well as step-by-step -step walkthroughs of each exploit uh, you know where you found your exploits um, and methods and tools used and all that good stuff so those are three things that I think will help future test takers uh, with this exam but that's my seven day walkthrough of the exam as well as my report writing after the exam uh, overall I really did enjoy the EC PPT version 2 I think the entire course and certification process taught me a lot about penetration testing and ethical hacking in general. I would definitely recommend it. Uh, if I can give any advice though, it would be probably wait for a sale. INE is notorious for offering uh, sales on their content pretty regularly throughout the year. So if I can give any advice, it would be to wait for a sale and then grab it as soon as you can because it is a great course. Um, I think they can improve the course overall with the labs by offering VPN instead of the guacamole uh, browser or guacamole server access to the browser but um yeah so thanks for watching the video guys please let me know if you have any questions or concerns feel free to like and comment and I hope you all have a wonderful day